Hello everyone and welcome to a little tutorial on doing bundled input or redneck cable input for computer craft in Minecraft 1.6.4. Do apologize my chair just squeaked there as I was talking. Okay so first of all before I do this is um, there seems to be some confusion about what mods do what um, or what versions we're using here so I thought I'd just show you my mod list. I've got the Minecraft Coder Pack 8.09, Forge Mod Loader, um, which is obviously for actually loading up the game. Minecraft Forge, once again loading up a profile for the game. Power Crystals Core 1.1.8, Computer Craft 1.63, and Mine Factory Reloaded 2.7.9. Um, so that's all the things that I have actually got loaded up at the moment for what I'm doing this um, tutorial with. Okay, so let's go into the um, world that I've set. Okay, so this is gonna be quite a simple uh, version um, of doing a bundled input. Um, my first tutorial was quite long-winded when it did the bundled output. I really need to remake it, so I thought I'd make this one quick and simple, and then for the more complex, full bundled functionality, I would do a different tutorial for that. So the first thing that I got a question about was whether or not you could get input or interact with the input from Mine Factory Reloaded Redneck Cable. And you can. So what I've got here is I've got my cable coming in. Um, now, you probably don't need this here, but to be perfectly honest, I just thought I'd put it in so you could see exactly what's going on. All that's happening is it's taking the input from the right and plug it straight back out, back out to the left. So you can see that when when your redstone signal comes into this, if you were to assign it a variable, you could have that variable hold the number of that signal. So for example, if I turn this one on, we'll have a signal strength of 15 minus 2, so that'd be 13. So this will be holding the signal strength of 13. And if we turn this on, we go into this and just do redstone dot get analog input and our side which is right don't need that capitalized you'll see we get an input of 13. Now if I turn this off I say turn on this one we should be getting 15 minus 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we should be getting an input of 9 there we go 9 and we'll just do a little test here honestly I've not done this I just whack this on here because I normally use a PCR Let's break this and put this in and see if we get exactly the same thing. No, we don't. And let's try turning this off. Turn it on again. See if we get an input from the right. There we go. Input of 11. So yeah, it works. You can just basically, if you just have a little bit of a redneck cable coming in, it will just tell you the input. The difference is you can't get a bundled, uh, any sort of bundled functionality. So you can't tell what color it is coming in all you can do is get the signal strength coming in but potentially you could have um, information coming in through one of these cables and what I'm going to do next is I'll show you that you can actually assign a value to those cables um, so I'm going to quickly set that up and show you okay guys so what I've basically done here is I've just put a programmable redneck uh, controller that's it, that's it. programmable redneck controller but that's hard to say and I've literally just put one single red, uh, logic gate in here. This is the minimum gate. And what the minimum gate does is you provide it with two numbers and it outputs the lowest number. So what I've done here is I've said, okay, so basically what I want is that input from that color on the right. So I've got the white color there on the right. On the right. Um, I want it to have a value of three. So <clears throat> in this minimum logic gate I've given it a constant of 3 and the input from the right so the input from the right is always going to be 15 um, if I'm just giving it a uh, just you know just getting an input from it directly from the source or if I'm doing it with some sort of red net system it will have an input of 15 but I want it to output 3 so constant of 3 input of right which will be 15 at the moment I'm just going to output the, the result of that to the left and as you can see I've just got a switch on it so that should be 15 going through there now if we type in again redstone dot get analog input right that didn't work did it 
you know, it helps if I turn that on. There we go. Uh, so obviously, if there's no signal coming through from there, it's going to be zero. So what is put through there is zero. Once it comes on, though, well, this has got a value of 15. The smallest number from that minimum output is three. So that's what we're getting through there. And that's what we use to do a really basic bundled input functionality. So what I'm going to do is just going to turn this on here and go into this. Now, um, I've assigned each of these numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 15. Now, we can't get 16 really on here because we can only have 15 in a redstone analog input. But let's just say, for example, I want the fourth one to go in. So turn that on. Now, if I set this up right, we should be seeing... Now, and if I now just whack this one on, we should now be seeing eight. Now, the problem with this setup here is it does give you potentially more than one input, but you can only ever get the highest input that comes in. This is kind of the easiest way to set it up so that you don't have a huge amount of logic gates controlling a single cable. So, you know, if you were having a system where there would only ever be one color of input coming in, or you wanted, say, an incremental input. So, say, for example, you might want to get it when it's got one, and then when it goes up to two, you might want to get that number, three, four. And the way this works is very similar to over there, but with a few extra bits and bobs. So, if I go to the first thing here. So, what I've got here is a minimum gate for every color that we've got. So the white, the first color has got a constant one and it outputs this to variable one. Constant two, constant three. So as you can see, I'm just using a minimum with two input here for every color cable that I'm doing. And it's always just putting out to the variable that has the same number as the value it's holding. So, you know, sort of when we've got an input from cable 10, it's got, con it's got a value of 10 and that's being held by variable 10. If there was nothing coming from that cable because we're doing a minimum there would be no the minimum there would be zero because we've got no input from that cable so we go along there so we've got our 15 cables the next thing we do is we then switch to a maximum logic gate so this means that if there is any value at all coming from any of those cables those four cables is we will have a value on there now this is really important that you can't do a minimum because if you do a minimum well, unless all four cables are on, you're going to get a zero. So you need to do the maximum. So, okay, so this means that if cable four is on and cable one, two, and three, you're always going to get four. You're always going to get the highest number come through, but at least we get the functionality out of it. If we use the minimum gate, we don't get any functionality. And we also have the problem there, of course, we can't just throw all these into the output to the left. Um, the output is going to the computer because if, say, variable one was zero and variable two was active it's going to output zero it's, it's going to output the first thing that you throw into it so that that's a bit of the problem there, which is why we need to do these extra gates so what we've done here now is we've done a maximum four input for the first three so we've got one two three four outputs that to 16 variables five six seven eight to 17 all of these using a maximum 9 10 11 12 and then the last one because we've only got three a maximum three input this gives us so variables 16 17 18 and 19 these now hold the maximum output that we're getting from the cables and then we do one final last one which is output maximum four input with those four variables that are holding those and we output that to the left so what that essentially means is any one of these cables that go on it's outputting the value that you assigned into here and then that will just pull out the maximum value that you're currently inputting and feed the maximum value into the computer. So if we just sort of demonstrate that. If we put value one on, we get one. Put two on, get two. Doesn't matter what we do with this. If we turn this back off, we're still getting two. Three. Put on value 15 the end here and get value 15. So um, if you're just looking for a very simple bundled input or how to just get a redstone signal going into the computer with the redneck cable, 
hopefully this tutorial will help you the next tutorial that I'm going to put up which is going to be a little bit more complicated a little bit more long-winded is going to be how to actually get full bundled input functionality and if you want to have a go at it yourself the basic way it's going to be is kind of reverse of what we did for the bundled output is we're going to have four different things that give a signal uh, 1 to 15 we're going to turn that 1 to 15 we're going to then add them all up in a binary way in the computer to give us the value of a binary value which will show us every single cable that is sending a signal in okay guys I hope that was useful for you please do drop any comments if you've got any questions um, or if you just enjoyed the video found it helpful or didn't find it helpful let me know if you have enjoyed the video please do think about pressing the like button and subscribing if you like the channel hope you have fun bye